Welcome to the first lesson of Unit 6 or Moles. 6.1 Mole, Avogadro's number and molar mass. The mole is a counting unit with a value of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It is like 12. When you count eggs, you count in dozens. When you count atoms and molecules and ions, we use moles. Here are the topics we are going to discuss in uh, moles. Moles are also called stoichiometry. You don't need to write all these topics. We will be discussing them one by one. So the first thing is review of scientific notation. It is something you have learned before in math. We use it in chemistry and science when we are dealing with large numbers with many zeros. It could be a number larger than one with many zeros or a number smaller than one with many zeros after the decimal point. They are confusing to write, so we use scientific notation to make it easy. There are two parts in a scientific notation. You have the coefficient, which is a number equal uh, between 1 but less than 10. And then you multiply that by a base of 10 times a power or exponent. The exponent will be negative if your whole number you are trying to convert is less than 1. And it will be positive if it's greater than uh, it's 1 or greater. And let's look at some examples. So if I ask you to convert 500, it has... Um, a, zero, a decimal point right here. So you're going to move the decimal point one two times. That means you took out 10, uh, 100 out of it. So the scientific notation value will be 5, or you can write 5.0 times 10 to the second power. Let's look at a large number. This one, again, the decimal is over here. So you're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine places to here. So it will be 7.7 .7 times 10 to the ninth power. Here's the decimal value. Now this decimal point has to be moved right up to here to be in line with our scientific notation format. So let's see how many places we move it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8 and 9. Because this is smaller than 1, you are going to multiply 8.6 times 10 to the negative 9th power. Um, there is also another video posted in your notes. If you need more help with scientific notation, please watch that. I recommend you write this down for your uh, review. So here's our first topic for today's uh, lesson, the mole and Avogadro's number. Since atoms and molecules are extremely small, you cannot weigh just one of them. It's impossible to do. So you have to weigh a large amount of these tiny particles to get a measurable mass value. So a scientist named Amedio Avogadro, who lived in the 1800s, created a counting unit that is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23. It's a very large number, as you can see. And he called it the mole. In chemistry, we count atoms, ions, and molecules in moles. And we will look at some problems doing that. In his honor, this value was named the Avogadro's number. You can remember avocado. We can remember avocado's number. And here are the main parts of this paragraph. Please write this down. A mole is a counting unit like the dozen. A mole is, was invented by chemists to count the amount of substance, amount of how many things there are, like amount of students, amount of blackboards, tables, computers, what have you. The unit used to say mole is M-O-L. So if I want to say one mole of something, then I write one M-O-L. And if I write 2.5 moles, then I write 2.5 M-O-L. Remember, we do not add the E when we are using moles, the unit for moles. 
A mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23, and that is called Avogadro's number. Can you see if you can convert these values? Some problems? Pause and see if you can do it. Okay, um, now if you look at this number and compare it to this number, you can see it's exactly half. And then 10, 10 to the 23rd power is the same. So um, this would be half a mole. We do not write halves in science. We write it as 0.5. And then this number is the same as the Avogadro's number. But here this is 2 more than 10 to the 23. That means this has 100 more. That means it is 100 CO2 um, moles. This number... Now I gave you the moles and I'm asking you how many molecules of CO2. Since one mole has this many molecules, how much would 3.5 moles have? You just multiply Avogadro's number by 3.5. So you're going to write this and then what you do is you multiply these two numbers. Leave the 10 to the 23 alone. Now you get 21.077, but you can't write it in this format. It has to be in this format. So you are going to take a 10 out of this. 21 is 2.1 times 10 to the 1. So you're going to write it like that. You're going to write 2.1 and then you add the 10 that was in here up to this. And here's your final answer. The final answer is 2.1077 times 10 to the 24th power. So remember when you look at the periodic table, the masses for each of the elements is also equal to the molar mass of that element stated in grams. So a mole of hydrogen is 1.088 grams per mole and that has 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of hydrogen and the same for everything else. Second topic is molar mass and molar mass calculations. I would like you to draw these boxes and write this down. So we know that a molar mass of something is the mass of one mole of that thing. One mole of atoms is equal to the gram atomic mass of that element found in the periodic table time, tile. And the mass of one mole of a compound is the mass of one mole or its chemical formula. Let's look at some problems. First, let's calculate the molar mass of an element or a monoatomic ion. You just ignore the charge and you just calculate the mass as if it was an element. So for hydrogen, it's 1.008 grams per mole or you write it G divided by mol. That's the unit for molar mass. Please remember that. Molar mass of carbon or C4 minus ion is the same as a carbon element. So it's 12.011 grams per mole. Now let's look at how to ca calculate the polyatomic, uh, sorry, compounds or polyatomic ions. Here is a compound which is um, C2H4. So you have two moles of carbon and four moles of hydrogen. And when you calculate it, you're going to multiply um, the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.011 times 2 moles, because this is 2. And to that, you add 4 moles of hydrogen times the molar mass of hydrogen. And then you replace the molar masses of hydrogen with the actual values and carbon. And then you simplify it. So this one, you will get 24.022 grams for the total amount of carbon in one mole of this compound and the total amount of hydrogen in this compound is 4.032 grams. 
when you add all of that you should get 28.046 grams then you round it to the nearest decimal place and you take this 6 away and you add a 1 to this number and you get 28.05 grams this means in 28.04 oh, uh, 28.05 grams you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 C2H4 molecules. Next up, let's check how to calculate a molar mass of an ion. In this case, let's look at the carbonate ion or CO3 2 minus. It's made out of one mole of carbon and three moles of oxygen. So you're going to pretend it's a compound and ignore the minus two or the charge of that ion. That's how you do the molar mass of an ion. Same as a compound. So uh, one mole times carbon molar mass plus three moles times oxygen molar mass. And then you substitute the values and you get these two final answers. You add them up, you get 59.98 one grams you round it to the nearest second decimal place and you get this value and then you write it like that you might get a decimal or two different don't worry about that and then that means in 59.98 grams um, you have a mole or 6.022 times 10 to the 23 carbonate ions can you see pause and see if you can calculate these questions. So aluminum oxide, ammonium sulfate and aluminum sulfate. Can you calculate their molar mass? This would be aluminum times 3. This would be uh, nitrogen times 2 plus hydrogen times 4 times 2 which is 8 plus sulfur times 1, oxygen times 4. And then this one would be aluminum times 2 plus sulfur times 1 sorry, sulfur times 3 plus oxygen times 14. Here are the answers to this. And that is it. And I will see you in the next video. Please make sure you do the exit ticket for this lesson.